Welcome back to Dial H for Heroclix. This is episode 256. I am your host, Chris Britton. So, as always, let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And don't forget, you can still use code DIAL5 at checkout for 5% off of whatever it is you order. It does not necessarily have to be Hero Clicks, but that's probably why we're here. Joining me in the studio again this week is my sexy ranch hand co host, Calder Ness. What is going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. Indeed, let's get rowdy. We like to typically start us off with what made us happy this week, just to uh, get it going, you know. We release our episodes on Sunday, so maybe help some people out throughout the week on their Monday morning commutes. What made you happy over this last week, Calder? Uh, you know, Chris, it's got to be a free comic book day. Uh, this is the first time I've ever went to a free comic book day, and it was really, really cool. I liked it a lot. Stood in line, I was... Endgame Captain America with a um, Age of Ultron suit on. I really do enjoy dressing up as Cap, so we had a good time. Took a lot of pictures. A lot of kids walked up. It was really, it was really great. I uh, got my free books. Pretty much, it was it was tough because I pretty much just had to pick up like anything that I cap in it. So, like there was an Avengers, or like two Avengers books, I think. But uh, then I just said I was gonna grab some for my brother or whatever, and I grabbed like three more books too. So that was all right. And uh, they had a bunch of 50% off, 25% off games and stuff. I got my free comic book day, Iron Man with Sidor Step, and that was awesome. So, yeah, we had a great day. I love how comic book, free comic book day has become this, like, small cultural event where everybody just cosplays when they show up and stuff. Yeah. No, that's dope. Uh, I was actually, uh, I wasn't like an official person there. They actually hire official cosplayers. But near the end of the events, the guy that does hire the official cosplayers said, hey, next year, if I wanted to give him more of a heads up, he would like to have me uh, be official there. Just saying, I'm pretty amazing. <coughs> <laughs> you, so, I mean, you make some really, really good cosplay, so I completely understand uh, I why best. someone would. Does that mean you're going to get paid? Hopefully, right? Or you just get to walk away with a lot more free stuff from free comic book day. Well, I would like that. I'd be okay, okay with that, too, honestly. I'm, I'm really glad you got a free comic book day Iron Man, because <laughs> mine was not free. <laughs> I think I'd do you like that, man. I don't understand. Like, I walked in, and I'm not the type of person that wants to just walk in, grab free stuff, and walk out. So I looked around. I wanted to buy something. I found uh, the complete collection of Cataclysm from the Ultimates universe. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy this for half off, which I was really excited about. But I walk up there, and I was like, I put Cataclysm down on the table. And he's like, okay, all right, uh, that's, that's going to be this much dollars. And I was like, oh, can I get one of these too? Because the Iron Man were right next to the register. And he's like, oh, yeah, hold on. And he backs out of the transaction, grabs it, scans the Iron Man, and then I paid two dollars for a free Iron Man. I was, like, I was like, it's only two dollars. Like, it's not a big deal, and you're supporting like a local brick and mortar yeah. comic book shop. So, like, I'm definitely not gonna make a stink about it. But I was like, sir, this is supposed to be free. <laughs> That's not what made me happy this week, though. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, absolutely. I went and did land navigation for the first time with the Army uh, this week. It was an optional thing that I signed up for, and my sergeant that I was speaking to, he's like, you can bring a friend if you want to. I was like, okay, cool, let's do this. Well, I brought my wife, and <laughs> he's like, he didn't tell anybody what was going on. He didn't say we're doing land nav. He just said, uh, wear some boots if you have them and also some long pants. That's all the instructions that I had. So I showed up and it's raining. And we show up, we're like, we're out in this, well, we went to a classroom basically first and they taught us how, okay. to, do, how to do land nav. And uh, Jaylene was right there the whole freaking time with me doing land nav. Which was awesome. If anybody out there is in the military and they've done land nav, you, you know what this means. When your spouse is out there who did not sign up for the military, they're just with you doing land nav. So what made me happy was at the end of it, when everybody was said and done, uh, found all their points and things like that, uh, they brought down like all of like the top five teams 
that got the best times and they gave them all like these small little awards and then the captain that was standing up there was like so we want to do one more thing uh we want to acknowledge and uh give another award out and that is to the only spouse that showed up for land navigation <laughs> and he's like ma'am come down here and Jaylene's like no 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 and he's like come down here and she's like Okay, and she looks at me, and she's like, I don't know what's going on, and I was like, just go. <laughs> so she yeah. goes down there, and he start, he's like, you know, when you join the military, it's not a nine-to-five job. This isn't a, a light a light decision, but when you marry into a military family, that is a, that is a major life change, and you were so brave to do that. Not only did you marry into that, you also – we're out here with your husband, and you're doing land nav out there. I saw you running around. By the way, she was wearing this, like, bright pink jacket. So she was the only one out there in this bright pink jacket running through, tracing through woods and, and uh, uh, sticker bushes and mud. And, like, we crossed multiple creeks and stuff. And you know, everybody was, like, soaking wet, and it's raining. And he's like, and you were out there through all of it. So, you know, we just we want to make sure that we acknowledge, it, how, you know, how cool that was. And he gave her a small little award, and she got I mean, I'm glad she got that award. That's what made me happy. I was like, man, that's that, awesome. I, I married like the coolest person ever because <laughs> she was out there with me. So that's what really made me happy. It was a really, really good week for me. So, all right, let's move on. We got so much to talk about in the news section. Let's jump into that. Twenty nineteen National Roads Road to Worlds National Championship uh, tournament and comprehensive rules update. We got quite a quite a few of them. Some are not really gonna affect many people at all. And some are actually kind of a drastic change, so we do need to go over them. Um, I, I'm gonna take the first one I figured you and I called her we could like just bullet point down back and forth. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, this the first one is talking about note taking, okay? So for the first time ever it's now legal to use non-electronic devices to keep notes while you play. It says players are allowed to use non-electronic devices such as pen and paper or a custom design tool to record and keep track of the game state. This typically applies to effects that allow selection of power, powers and abilities and also to keep track of the current score. Players must be able to record this information in a timely manner. Otherwise, they risk a penalty for delaying the game. They didn't explain what the penalty is, but... Hey, at least this is a long time coming. Um, I want to go back to when Possessors came out, and I was like, this should be a thing. You should be allowed to write down notes because people are cheating. But it's only like, what, six years late? But hey, at least they got around to making this legal now, so you can write down this stuff on paper, especially with all of the pick a power characters out there, to make sure that uh, you are reminding yourself. Uh, also, you don't accidentally be like, oh yeah, I chose this, when you really didn't, because like your heart's in the right place, but you forgot, or it'll prevent cheating. So I thought this was actually a really good change, and good for you, kids. Awesome, yeah. Uh, next up, a few of these are kind of based around custom hero quest figures. Now, past rules for this was basically... If you had a custom figure, you would have to ask your, you'd have to A, keep a normal version of it, right? I have this Iron Man, then I have the normal version of him, that same sculpt. Or you would have to, and then of course you have to ask your opponent whether or not you want to play against this Iron Man or a custom one. So let's kind of go into these. They kind of change a lot of, a lot of things here. So players may not use custom or modified sculpts for their game elements. All game element sculpts must be their original sculpts and must be the correct sculpt for their combat dial. Players may use custom action tokens and custom items for generated game elements, markers, bystanders, etc. The tournament staff may at their discretion forbid custom action tokens or items that are potentially offensive or excessively confusing. That first one, very, very interesting, uh, very clean and cut. Uh, these are all kind of the same, so I'll just rattle them off anyways. Uh, custom painted game elements and sculpts. Players may custom paint their game element and sculpts and use them in tournaments without needing an opponent's approval. So if you want to go ahead and paint, I don't know, your Gwenpool to look like a Deadpool, so whatever, it's a female Deadpool, like however you want to do it, you can do that. So that's cool. You know, and as long as it is not, once again, potentially offensive or excessively confusing, it's okay. 
And then game element cards. Players are required to bring and use the original cards for all of their game elements. Proxy cards will not be allowed, so like ones that you can print off, like a printer or whatever. If a card becomes damaged beyond use or is missing when a player... When playing in a sealed event, at the discretion of the tournament staff, a replacement card may be used if available, or the player may use a printed version of the card provided by the tournament staff. So that's really cool. I think these rules just make it slimmer and easier for custom objects in the game. Now, of course, if you're going to be kind of upset about this, don't worry about it, because if, you know, at your home venue where you're running your totally custom figures, no one's going to care like what's going on, as long as it's not like a Mangog, Surter, Sculpt Swap. You should be all right. So if you want to be creative, go for it. I'd say this is more in line for WKOs or official WizKids events like nationals and whatnot. What I really don't understand is why it was such a big deal if people were pulling up with modified sculpts. As long as it said, like, the figure number on it and you knew it was a modern legal version, the dial represented is, is actually legal. Why does it matter what is on the sculpt? You know, I kind of agree, but some people will just be like, oh, it's a Spider-Man on the sculpt, and they won't know that you, you know, took it from some other leaping, climbing character and stuff. So I understand why there's confusion, but also I like custom hair flicks. I think they look really awesome. I love people being creative and doing stuff like that. So I think, I personally think it's fine, as long as you're not trying to trick someone, you know, by like saying, oh, cool, Mangog, Surger, Sculpt Swap, stuff like that. I can see why. I'm not a lot of people would uh would just break the sculpts off their colossals just so they would keep the bases around, which I really hate. Um, <laughs> that's that to me is just like wow, you really only care about that. Uh, like, don't even care about any thematicness at all. So yeah. that's yeah. So long and short of it is, you can't customize your sculpts, but you can customize your sculpts with paint. With the paint. <laughs> All right, the last one, which I thought, or I'm sorry, last one that I, I really cared about uh, is, is the victory conditions. Heroclix game has three ways to determine the winner. Uh, when one player is undefeated before the time limit is reached, uh, the time limit is reached if the time limit is reached the player that scored the most victory points in that game. Uh, so those are the two that we're, or we're used to, right? Those are the ones yep. that we've always played with introduction of a third win condition uh which i thought was super good because i've actually i'll, I'll tell you an anecdotal story once i get through the, the rules change it says during a two-player game if a player's victory point total is equal or higher than the build total value plus 100 after the most recent effect resolves that player is the victor for example if the build total is 300 the game would end as soon as a player scores 400 or more points when would this come up I'll tell you exactly when this came up for me in my life. Do you remember the Age of Ultron set with the actual, uh, the movie one, and then it had the Ultrons in it that could generate more Ultrons? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, there was actually a way to never lose. If it was not a timed game, you could literally just continue to generate Ultrons, and your it was an attrition battle that you couldn't lose if you were running the Ultrons. So this actually makes a new win condition against teams like that. It is not the only time that this is going to come up, but it's the time that came up in my life. And I was like, ha I, we, there's no time limit on this. I, I literally conceded because I was like, so you're telling me I, I cannot win. There's literally no way to win, and there was never a way to win, even when the game began. I was like, that's, I mean, it's within the rules of the game, and the cards state it so, so I guess it's not, it's not really cheating at all. It's playing within the confines of the rules. But, I mean, like, this is cheap, man. Like, you knew, yeah. you knew you couldn't lose, and you brought this team anyway. Like, this sucks. So, at least there's that now. So, I thought that was good change um, and slightly interesting. I want to know what the um, event was that brought this into the game, because I know it wasn't the Ultron story. Here's what I, what I would assume it is. So, um, I wouldn't just say it's call-ins, but, of course, when you kill a call-in, typically they're around 50-ish points right now. Some are 70, some are, of course, 200, whatever. That can really affect... The point total, but I feel like that really brought around this change was Unimind, because when you kill him or it, you score no points, and then of course all the Eternals pop out, and then if you kill a bunch of Eternals, normally you end up with like 600 something insane amount of points. So I, I assume it's Unimind and how just 
kind of dumb it is when you beat that uh, that character and how many just freaking points you get if you can wipe out all the Eternals and stuff. So I feel like that's what you know kind of brought about it. I like the idea of that once you score a hundred more than the build total, just the game's over. Um, that could also be terrible, you know. So right. I just want to see it play out and. Uh, the scoring point cap is also really interesting, where if you would score more than, like, let's just say, modern 300, you would just write down uh, 300. So I think that's really interesting, too. Sure. Well, that's all I had all about that, so let's go ahead and move oh. on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there, we could talk a lot about it, but uh, I think, think it, keeping it, keeping it simple is uh, the best. Probably. I'm sure every other podcast is going to have something to say. Uh, you want to do buys? Oh, that's right. There's more. Um, you know, I like to work out. I like to do a little bit of buys and ties every once in a while. So let's go talk about buys. A buy is issued when there are an odd number of players in a Swiss event. A buy is considered a win. First round buys are assigned randomly in subsequent rounds. The buy is given to the lowest ranked player who has not already received a buy. The player that receives the buy receives a win for that round and score half the build total, typically 150 points. So that was like... No change, I'm pretty sure, like, at all. I'm pretty sure it's always how it worked. I'm going to read in here a little bit. By having the maximum score, one can record being capped at 300 points. We feel comfortable changing how buys work. Players who earn a buy due to an odd number of players at a tournament are awarded a win and half the point build of the tournament, usually 150. With all the changes listed above, we feel that a player does receive a buy, which is beyond their control and is not an extreme disadvantage. If the need for a tiebreaker arises, the final tournament standings. Uh, so they really didn't change buys that much. And they just kind of said, ah, we did everything so perfectly well, so buys are fine. All right, well, past the buys, we have the ties. It says, during the Swiss rounds of an event, if a game ends with both players scoring zero points, both players will receive a game loss. How is this different? Uh, I don't know yet. I've actually never had a tie, and I've never seen one in real life, so I really don't know, gotcha. honestly. Okay. It also says, otherwise, if players have a tied victory point total, the winner will be determined by a roll-off of 2d6, with the winner being the player that has the higher result, re-rolling ties. <laughs> During the single elimination portion of event for any ties, including zero-point ties, the winner will be determined by a roll-off. I, I don't know what's different about this. I don't know why it's in there. Um... I believe you would still do a roll-off, even if you both scored zero. And now there's an incentive to actually go. So let's say I'm playing a team that is really slow, and you really can't kill me. But once you get close to me, I can just slaughter you. If you just decide to keep running away the entire game, and none of us score any points and use any uh, sideline Collins or whatever, just no points are scored, then it's like, well, take, game goes to time, let's roll off. And I've played against people that have just said, this game is just going to go to time, so I'm not going near you. And I'm like, well... You be that way, then, I guess. You know, cool. they'll just be like, I'll take the 50-50 roll-off. So now there's an incentive to not just move around and not, you know, just ignore your opponent and whatnot. Uh, instead, there's actually a reason to go out there and score points. Otherwise, it's a loss for both of you. Now, if it's single elimination, since there can't be a double loss in a single elimination, there has to be a winner, there is, I guess, still an incentive to kind of, uh, you know, play that way. In a single elimination, so. But what can you do? It's the way the tournament needs to work, so I understand that. All right. Well, that's all we have for rules changes, and there are a bunch of con exclusives on the bottom of that WizKids article. I will link that in the podcast show notes, as always, when we do have stuff like that, so you can click on it and read it at your leisure. Look at these. Um, I, I do want to talk about more news, and then we're going to start getting into dials in a few of the pieces that came out this week just because we had so much and we cannot go through all of these in in the amount of time that it probably a lot of these deserve so we are going to talk about the wwe hero clicks uh information that did come out this week we got information finally on the starter set okay it's called the rock and sock connection two player starter set Celebrate the release of WWE Heroclix with this starter set. This is the perfect way to get up to speed on WWE Heroclix. Now, there's some things in this. I It brought some arguments online. If people are like really confused as to the wording uh, that came out, and you'll understand here in a second. It says, this contains everything you need to start playing Heroclix. Powers and abilities card, Heroclix rules, tokens, a map. 
Uh, it, by the way, it does not say that it includes dice, which means that this is not true when it says it contains everything you need to start playing Heroclix. If it, if it in fact does not have dice, they may have just left that off of here, uh, off of the, the little list. But if it doesn't, then I feel like it's false advertising. But we'll come back to dice here in a little bit. It's just a little <laughs> bit of foreshadowing, all right? And it comes with six WWE superstars. Combine this starter set with WWE Heroclix expansion packs, sold separately, for even more tabletop fun. Superstars in the Rock and Sock Connection starter set include The Rock, Mankind, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Triple H, Ric Flair, and Shawn Michaels. Now, I'm not going to lie. That is a sweet lineup for a Star That's set. amazing, dude. I, I really love it. There is, I don't think there is one character in there that I wouldn't mind having. Like, oh, absolutely. That is so awesome. I also love how it, it says something about expansion packs. Like, it sounds way better than what it is, but it's not really. Yeah. <laughs> expansion pack contents of an expansion pack. Exact game components subject to change, by the way, is what it says in parentheses, which I don't understand. But I guess we'll find out. Here's the contents of an expansion pack. Sounds awesome, right? One WWE Heroclix figure and one WWE Heroclix character card. It's Whoa! A, it's a gravity feed pack that they're renaming into an expansion pack. Cool. <laughs> oh, why? Just why? You got anything? No? All right. No, just the why. I mean, we can <laughs> keep going. <laughs> All right. Prepare to bring fan favorite WWE superstars to your next Hero Clicks game in a big way. Build a team of your favorite superstars, battle against your friends, and become the champion. These figures will have a fresh feel for Hero Clicks veterans and a rich thematic game play for beginners. WWE Hero Clicks even features, and this is the part where everybody started getting like, what does this mean? Yeah. Never before seen pack powers specific to WWE. All right, conjecture. Throw it at me. What do you think this means? So uh, what I hope it means is that there are optional powers um, that are just like pay five points. Then you get some WWE exclusive powers, something that sort of works like a grapple or throw or whatever. I don't know. What Would I that hope not it be an ability. Though that would yeah pretty much right. Wouldn't that remind you of such past mechanics that were very particular to certain sets, like grenades being thrown from like Halo figures or Gears right. of War figures or something like that? Why does it say powers? Did they accidentally pick the word powers instead of the word abilities, or are we actually getting new powers? Or in the very very and this is the most unlikely of all of the scenarios. These are different power powers, but I saw this from some people online. Different powers colored the same colors as colors already used, and these characters will not be compatible with regular hero clicks. If that's true, this won't sell. <laughs> like oh, that's yeah, just it's not going to sell. Straight up a fact. You know, as much as I want, then I'm just going to have a little miniature figure that I'm not going to be able to play every week because no one is going to take their time to randomly play WWE with me. Instead, it's like, let's just play normal hero clicks. You can go play by yourself. So let's um, let's make sure these aren't, like, weird. Let's, so let's say they're, like, double-sided cards. Maybe they're more, like, horror clicks, zombie ones that could be used in both horror clicks and in the normal hero clicks. In that case, they're the same color powers, but they do different things. Now, if that's the case, I'm all for it. I'm really happy. That's cool. It'll add flavor to uh to WWE games and it'll be totally just whatever who cares for normal hero clicks games kind of like how in Yu-Gi-Oh they had a few different things I mean that still wasn't legal for whatever but of course you could still blah 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 what I'm trying to say is please do not ruin this guys people got so hyped and with like one sentence you made them just doubt everything Whew. well this is correct but they also have one also major screw up in my opinion. I would go as far as to say it's even a downstairs mix-up. You see my downstairs mix-up? Yeah, I didn't ask to see that, did I? I'm all Greg. What was it you and I wanted so badly with WWE Hero Clicks? Oh, that's right. A lot of objects that are not being made yeah. into WWE Hero Clicks. Why do we not have a chair? Why do we not have a ladder or a table? 
because that would have like seriously brought in a lot of people. Just the absurdity of it would have made people go, man, I really need that in my life. And then an MSRP of eight dollars per expansion pack, man, I don't know about this. Although I will say, I will say, the sculpts are super awesome. <laughs> oh no, the sculpts are amazing. Um, we got like an Undertaker in the sweet trench coat with his hat on, all tip in the hat. Oh which, yeah, which is really nice. I mean, he's got a tombstone by him. That's awesome. That was awesome. Uh, you got the cane standing next to a turnbuckle with yep. fire shooting out of the turnbuckle. That's awesome. We already saw the Stone Cold Steve Austin. Did we yep. see the Rock? No, we didn't. So we have a Rock who has. Uh, his eyebrow all arched and everything. Oh, yeah. He's got the mic. He's holding it up like, can you smell what the rock is cooking? So that's really cool. We got a Triple H who's doing the whole water spit thing. Uh, yeah. Got to kind of play it with an Eddie Guerrero. No offense. They did, we saw, they did a really good fan service for what you would want to see their sculpts be. Oh, absolutely. You know, like what, what makes the characters in the WWE, their personalities, like, oh, that's their trademark thing. You know? Their moves and stuff. Right, uh, Rowan Reigns doing a kind of Superman punch looks really great. Like, that's a sweet-looking sculpt. Uh, AJ have, Styles like, doing LeBron his... LeBron James. Whatever. If, if they oh, yeah. a hero click of LeBron James, do you want him, like, dribbling a basketball? Or do you want him throwing chalk up in the air? Yeah. You know, like, that seems to me, like, to be his thing, or at least used to be. I don't know if he still does that. Do you still do that? I don't watch basketball. I don't watch you know, like Jackson guy who's never watched a basketball game through in his life besides like high school basketball. Gotcha. Well, yeah. regardless, uh, these sculpts look sweet. I'm I'm genuinely excited about these. I did not know that we were getting a mankind. I did not know that we were getting a big show or an Andre the Giant. Like that oh, is so that awesome. Andre the Giant is so cool, man. That is so cool. So I'm I mean, I'm liking the sculpts more than I'm liking what I'm seeing out of the information. I just hope that they uh they really do this well because a lot of people care Absolutely. about this. I uh, just want to read about the second uh, little, not really a starter pack, but kind of its own thing. Do you want me to read that? You go for it. The Mixed Match Challenge WWE Ring. Oh, wow, they're reusing a ring. Who who could have possibly guessed that? Oh, <laughs> shocker, I know. So, the ring, two-player starter set. Celebrate the release of WWE HeroClix with this starter set. This is a perfect way to get up to speed on WWE HeroClix. This contains everything you need to start playing HeroClix. Powers and abilities card, HeroClix rules, tokens and a map, but of course, who needs dice? And for WWE superstars, this special starter also includes a WWE ring that can be used in HeroClix. Combine this starter set with the WWE expansion pack sold separately for even more tabletop fun. Superstars include, now, we got a stellar lineup before. This one is not so much, depending on what you think. We got a Charlotte Flair, a Sasha Banks, Finn Balor, and AJ Styles. So really about half of those are good. Uh, the expansion pack includes, of course, oh, this is just the expansion pack thing, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's really cool. So we got a ring. Uh, who knows? How different will it be than the boxing ring? Hopefully very different, and I hope it's uh, still good and legal and all that goodness. It goes and says a few other figures that are going to be there that we may have not known about, like Trish Stratus, or, well, not her, but, uh, like, Asuka, Big Show, Ronda Rousey, Andre the Giant, all sorts of stuff are mentioned here, which is cool. So, I'm excited. I was honestly really excited to see all these characters. I feel like, with all the skulls we've seen and these new names that are thrown up, do we know everything in this, uh, in this set? Because I think it was supposed to be, like, 18 or so characters for the expansion, and maybe we're not reusing the sculpts like we do in normal sets for the stutter sets and everything, so maybe I, there's more. Oh. I'm thinking if we don't have them all at this point, we're getting real close, man, like yeah. real close. Uh, but, I mean, how many more characters do have they not announced that you would really, really want out of the set anyway? Like Sting? Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. There's uh, still there's just, definitely quite a few Sting, Kurt Angle, um, okay, yeah, okay. stuff. I mean... I guess it's probably going to change from person to person based off of the time period of when you oh, for watched sure. wrestling or if you just still currently wrestling. Like, what about all the people that got into wrestling way after the Attitude Era, which is my right. era of wrestling? So, like, I, I don't know. There's probably a million more wrestlers that... Gold Dust. Uh, we definitely need a gold... <laughs> do you remember that guy? <laughs> yeah, I do, because he just <laughs> freaks me the heck out. Gold Dust and Stardust. Just weird, man. Weird. weird. Them and the Hardy Boys were just wrestlers I never cared for. They just kind of freaked me out in their own special way. 
All right. Well, that is all the information I think we have on WWE. We still got a lot to get through, so let's just go ahead and just push on through. Figures. We got a bunch of figures. Uh, like I mentioned, there are a bunch of uh, Con LEs. We are not going to go through all of the Con LEs, but we are going to do a service to our DC fans out there for once because uh, Caller and I chose one of the, call, the Con LEs a piece to talk about just because of time restraints, and they are both DC figures for once. So I'm going to yeah. start us off with Superman Prime. One uh, For one, don't think he's ever been clicked. For two, this might be the single most expensive point value Superman we've ever made. Three, I don't think we're ever going to get him again. Uh, four, the sculpt is awesome. Like, <laughs> it's just so cool looking. Uh, coming in at 350, 250, or 150 points, Superman Prime. Uh, he has the quintessence and the Superman team abilities. He has flight, eight range, one bolt, and two traits. Uh, let's start off with keywords, though. Justice League, Kryptonian, Cosmic, and Future. It does not have any improved anything. I mean, other than the Superman team ability. I guess that gives him quite a bit. But you'd think Superman, and, like, I mean, he spent 15. This is Superman Prime. If you don't know, this is like an alternate future Superman where he lived inside of the sun for 15,000 years, and that's where he de derives his powers. So I feel like if he's just, he's like, just like, a crazy, super-powered, like, Odin sleep, fresh nap Superman or whatever it's supposed to be, he should be blasting through blocking terrain and all yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah, all right, so. well, you can't, you can't get them all, so whatever. Um, he does have the first trait, says, uh, super strength, colossal stamina. When Superman Prime clears, heal him of one click. That's pretty legit. I really like that. Uh I mean, it makes sense. That's where he gets his powers and where he heals from, so cool. Uh, second trait, bestow on you a portion of my power, leadership, when Superman Prime uses it and succeeds. He may instead remove an action token from another friendly character within range that shares a keyword. Notice it does not say line of sight, so just within range, and the range, once again, is 8, so that's pretty legit. If he does, modify that character's combat values by plus 1 until your next turn. Also really cool. So... For the Justice League teams out there that you need leadership on, and obviously not gonna, probably going to be running him at 350 points, uh, you can run him at 150 points, and you still get that cool trait. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, so let's let's. Uh, I'm going to do the 350 start dial and then the 150 start dial, just so you can see the just the the craziness, and then the what he's probably going to be used for if he gets used at all. Uh, the top dial, 350 points. What do you get? 12 speed, hypersonic speed, 12 attack, that's naked, 19 defense with that pink power, and 6 printed damage with a special damage power called, I'm Superman, welcome to my universe. Outwit, probability control, sweet! Uh, when Superman Prime uses either, he may use it an additional time this turn if he has one or more action tokens. All right, so you can't get that like first alpha strike off with the probability control, well, maybe you can if you, like, shuffle him, like, turn one or something like that. But, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Seriously, you don't want to miss with your 350-point figure that gave him probability to make sure that doesn't happen. It's just, it's dumb. His power, his powers on the dial switch from, like, hypersonic speed to running shot to charge, and his, his attack values are just all kinds of crazy. On this 11-click long dial, he has... Four clicks of 19 defense spread out, uh, and the rest of them are 18, which is dumb. His his base damage never drops below a four, which is awesome. Uh, but so <clears throat> that's the just the crazy beat stick that people are just going to use for funsy games. But if you actually want to use him in like a 300 point game or something like that, where the 150 point line, this is what you're going to get. 10 speed with hypersonic speed instead of 12. 11 attack, so he loses one. But he still maintains that 19 defense with that pink power, which is awesome. Damage drops down to four. But he still keeps the special damage power. So that's awesome. And then on click 11, his, his stats jump back up to what the click number one is, except for he minuses one damage. So 12, 12, 19, 5. He's a beat stick, which is super awesome. The only thing is, for 150 points, you only get five clicks of life. But he has yeah. contestants, so that's pretty cool. Is he the best ever? No, not not really. But he's super fun. Like, 
I really like the sculpt. I really like the idea of just a Superman living inside of the sun for 15,000 years. So, cool. Interesting Con Ellie, and a certain, certainly a good choice for a Con Ellie. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, I'm done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the one that I was really most excited for. So, uh, you may not think me, Chris, are the biggest DC fans, but one of my favorite TV shows growing up was Static Shock. And we finally have a Static Shock, or finally have a Static, that is worthy of how, how freaking awesome he was in that show. It's still probably one of my favorite animated shows to this day. So Static comes in. He has Justice League, Star Labs, Teen Titans, Young Justice, and Scientist keywords. So he has a whole, you know, five more keywords than he had in his last version, which is pretty cool. He starts at 65 points or 40 points, and there are some pretty cool things which he does at each. So uh, he has one, well, sorry, he has two traits. So the first one being using the environment, telekinesis as free, but only to pick up an object and then be given a range object action. So we can go ahead and be moving objects all over the place, which is really cool. He has flight, five range, no other special combat symbols. He starts off with running shot, pulse wave, 18 defense, with super senses, three damage, 10 attack, and eight speed. He has two clicks, then he goes down to his 40-point line, where he has some sidestep with Pulse Wave, and then he goes into Energy Explosion, ESD, Enhancement, and then some Running Shot with Energy Explosion. Now, his first trait being, uh, if he's 65 points, you get Best Friend and Ally at the beginning of the game, generate a Gear Bystander. This is so awesome. Sadly, I don't know if they didn't get the rights to, like, footage or pictures from the show since his uh, Gear, whatever, slot Whatever it would be, his picture is just empty. It's all black. Uh, he has four range, no special combat symbols. He has sidestep with a seven speed, nine attack, nothing, 16 defense with ESD, two damage with uh, special damage power, time for a tune-up, perplexed but only to target himself or a friendly character named Static. So now you have this gear who you can carry around. He can sidestep all on his own some. You know, it's pretty cool. And he can go ahead and bump up his def you know, Static's defense to a 19, uh, for 65 points, uh, getting Running Shot Pulse Wave with an extra Perplexer is pretty awesome. I really like this static. He feels uh, cool. You kind of realize that he's also just kind of a kid and still really new with his powers, so he's not, like, straight up overpowered, but he just feels like kind of how static would be in this game. So I really, really like it. Not only that, but his sculpt is awesome. Oh, like, it's so that, that is exactly what I wanted out of a static shock sculpt. I mean, he's riding little metal, like, trash can lid-looking thing that he always... Uh, rode around on in the con in the uh, in the, the show. Man. The show, yeah. Like I, I love that show a lot. I used to watch it all the time. So this is awesome. I think they did a really good job. And for 65 points, you can slap him onto a Justice League team if nothing yep. else. Maybe Teen Titans if they, if that's your thing. Uh, good luck on Young Justice. It doesn't have as much love as the yeah. other two, but I mean, I, they're adding to that keyword. So they're yeah, that. absolutely. So, I, I think he was a fantastic Con Ellie choice as well. 100%. The rest of the Ellie's that we didn't discuss, I'll just shout them out all here in case none of you guys know. But it, there's Ambrose Chase, the Weapon H Wolverine uh, Gray Hulk. Uh, we got a Hulk with a squid head. We got Storm with Mjolnir. We got uh, Parabi Reed with the H dial, which is really cool. It's the you know the thing that Dial H for Hero is based on. It's kind of what we named our podcast, or not what we did, but you know the other guys named the podcast after. But it's not that great. So it wasn't really worth talking about, sadly. Um, there's a Miles and Gwen duo, which is really cool and really unique in its own way. There is a Robin with a riot helmet on. I'm sorry. I don't know what that's from. Um, it's a motorcycle helmet. Motorcycle. Oh, it looks like a riot helmet. Oh, okay. Because it goes with the bat cycle. <laughs> right. And then so we got the bat cycle, and then we got two more rings. We got the lightning mansion ring, and then we got the liar mansion ring, which is really cool. So these are WKO slash nationals and world convention exclusives so that's really cool uh like i said the podcast show notes if you have not already seen all of these just click into the podcast show notes you can click on the whiz kids article you can scroll to the bottom all of these con exclusives will be there for you to look at so that's uh, about as far as we want to go into there we got also this week a bunch because i don't know if you knew this but the black panther and the illuminati set is coming out real soon so we needed to start getting a bunch of those previews calder are there any figures that you particularly wanted to talk about i for sure want to talk about kobik uh because she is really cool and i would kind of say ooh, so now i gotta scroll because i gotta find the other post it's yeah pretty much just kobik and i could also cover iron man if we uh, wanted to 
Let, let's see how we're doing on time. Cause we're Sounds good. Stuff. But go for it. Shoot Kobik. Okay, Kobik. So, if you don't know anything about Kobik, uh, she's kind of a newer character, I think 2016-ish. Around that time as she was introduced, she is uh, a little girl who is the Cosmic Cube. We'll just read him. We'll, we'll have fun with it. We'll just have fun with it, okay, guys? Uh, she has Hydra, Shield, Thunderbolts, and Cosmic Keyword. She has three traits. First, I'll go into her dial uh, a little bit because she has a lot of words. She has eight range, double bolts, power, cosmic team ability. She's 100 points, and she has no special combat symbols. Her first three clicks, she has mind control. Then she has no special attack power, or no attack power at all. Then she has super senses for her first three clicks, a special damage power for her first three clicks, which is perplex, prob, and shape change. Then on her last three clicks, she has facing teleport, incapacitate, ESD, and just probability control. So, a really cool supporty piece. Uh, so that 8 range is really nice. No improved targeting, which is kind of a bummer. She is set number 69, <coughs> and that makes her a chase in this set, which is really cool, and she is silver ringed, of course. Now, if you want to pay an extra 15 points, she starts with any one Cosmic Cube equipped, which means we're going to get more than one Cosmic Cube, so I really, really appreciate that. Which is really interesting. Can I hit that real quick while you're in the middle of... Yeah, let's do it. So, pe so people know, um, it is indestructible. Equip any, unequip is drop, and it is 30 points normally. Uh, its effect says free. This is so cool. Like I've said a million times, I really like modal options on anything, right? So pick a power pieces are really cool to me. Well, this is basically like a pick a ability option. Free, choose one. You can either place this character up to three squares away from its current square. Good. Uh, unt or, until your next turn, give this character improved targeting, ignores elevated and uh, tr uh, elevated terrain and hindering terrain, and modify their range by plus two. Also good, because remember she had eight range, so you can give her two right. range. That's pretty sweet. Or... You can give uh, an action token to an adjacent opposing character, and if you can't, deal them one penetrating damage. Three options. Super cool. I liked it a lot. Fantastic. And, of course, there's going to be another one, or maybe three. Who knows? So they can all do all sorts of things. Uh, but keeping that in mind, here are other two traits. So, three. Rewrite affiliations. Choose both a friendly character and an opposing character with a printed team ability. They both have printed team abilities. Those characters can use the team abilities printed on the other character instead of their own printed team abilities until your next turn. So, if you wanted to say, make a stand-up American guy who's a great Avenger into, well, I'll just, well, let's say randomly, uh, Hydra for some reason, you could do that and make a million people sad. So, her other trait is rewrite history, which is power once per game. So, you only do this once, guys. Choose an adjacent friendly character on their starting line and a character on your sideline with the same name as the chosen character. If the first character is equal or more points in the second, replace the character with the second character on their starting line. The character can't have the same set symbol and collector number. So you can't swap with the same guy. That doesn't make any sense. So if they're on the starting click and you realize, hey, I didn't need to bring this Iron Man into the fight. Uh, this one's actually kind of like a better suited for these foes type thing. You can bring can you in a different character. How thematic that is for the character. Oh, it's super thematic. They did can a we, great job. Can we can we spoil? Can we do this? Can oh, it's been years, man. It's, it's been, been years. years. And we All got right. we already got a Hydra cap in. All right. The so. the re why it's thematic if you didn't know is Kobik is the reason that Hydra cap even exists. She yeah. rewrote history. That's the name of the trait. She rewrote Captain America, the original Captain America. To like have been a Hydra agent all along, so that's how you're swapping out characters. It makes total sense. It's like that's really cool. I really like this. For sure. Yeah. No. So that's <laughs> Kobik. Sorry. Yeah. That's pretty much Kobik. That is what she does. So she does a lot of cool things. She is once again kind of thinking about this. She's a hundred point support piece. As much as I really like her, and I'll probably try to put her on a couple of teams, I don't know how impactful she is going to be to the game. Potentially, there's going to be some nuts dude that I just can't uh, put together with my little pea brain, so maybe she's pretty pretty great, you know. Uh, I do like her a lot, though, and if anything, she's very thematic, so as just a comic fan, I really do like it. All right, speaking of, if you are a comic book fan, I will do uh, a nice little slow clap for WizKids on this particular piece that I wanted to talk about. It's none other than Parker Robbins, The Hood, which is one of my favorite villains in all of Marvel Comics. 
the reason why I think that they did such a good, cool job is because the sculpt is ripped directly from the cover of the issue, the significant appearance. Uh, well, actually, the significant appearance, which is the hood, number one, from 2002, is not the issue that they show you on the back of the card, which I thought was weird. That hood issue was good, and it gave you the background story of Parker Robbins. This is the Avengers when uh, he gets a hold of the Infinity Gauntlet. So just the fact that they ripped that sculpt from the uh, the cover, I was like, cool. Because I, I noticed the sculpt way before I noticed the cover, and I was like, oh, that's a weird way to go with him, but okay. And then I was like, oh, yeah, this makes a lot more sense now. So good on you, kids. Starting off at 95 points, I guess, unless you pay for the trade. Uh, we have, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Cabal. And what do you, can you read that second um, keyword? Is it Illuminati? I'm not really sure. I believe it's Illuminati, yeah. Uh, the Mag Magia and the Mystical. Uh, he does have the Mystics team ability. He has flight and no other special combat symbols. Uh, for five points or 15 points, you can pay for either of those. You can get this trade. It's called Bearer of the Infinity Gauntlet. The hood starts the game with any one Infinity Gym equipped. If you paid 15 points, he may instead start the game with the Infinity Gauntlet equipped. So that's kind of cool. I like that. He has uh, two traits. The first one is power in the palm of my hand, free. If the hood is equipped with an Infinity Gym, remove it from the game without scoring it. Then equip uh, him with a different Infinity Gym from outside of the game. That's cool. You can swap them out. Uh, the other one says, rule as the world burns. When an opposing character rolls for leadership and the result is one to two, remove an action token from the hood, which is also pretty cool. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly how <laughs> thematic that is, but I, uh, I liked it a lot. Um, he starts off with six range double bolts, ten speed with a special speed power called Infinity Quest. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. This is a lot of words. Phasing Teleport. When the hood is equipped with a listed Infinity Gym, he can use the following effects. Space gives him uh, Passenger 4, but only to carry characters that share a keyword with him. If he's equipped with the power, it says when the hood moves once per turn after resolutions, he may make an attack, which is cool because you could theoretically have a 10 square running shot plus the 6, so a 16 square spread, which is pretty cool. Um, he doesn't do much for damage, though, spoiler alert. And then the reality, that's the last option, is stealth. If the hood or an adjacent character oc occupying a – or an adjacent character occupy a clear square, um, lines of fire drawn to him are hindered. So that's, that's kind of cool. It's like your super stealth. Stats-wise, he, he's not much of a damage dealer top dial, but if you click him from click number one to two, so you – except some of that pushing damage. He does go into running shot, 10 speed, 11 attack with Pinsai, 18 defense with uh, with uh, super senses, and 3 damage. He's, I think, a little bit overcosted, except for the fact that you can like pick stuff, especially if you add the infinity gauntlet to him to make him like a grand total of 110 points, and you get like pick of powers. But remember, the infinity gauntlet, you can run the risk of doing damage to yourself. So... Who knows if that's the option you want to go with. I just really like the hood. I wanted to talk about him, so there you go. Do with it, do with it what you will. Yeah, no, I think he's really good. Um, I kind of a little bit weirded out that it only says space, power, and reality if those are the only three stones out of the six in this set. Or no, I think. Do we already get something else spoiled? Probably, but. Uh, well, I'm not worried about the, the set itself. I think that that's thematic to the comic. Oh, like the ones he used the most or like the ones he used I don't remember. First? At, I think in the storyline he did not acquire all of the gems on the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, okay. That's why he didn't go full-blown like Thanos. He only got to like three, I think, and I think those are the three, I think. But, but I have always really dug time. Um, like the Hood character. I've never read anything with him, but I always uh, like the fact that some random – kind of thug guy was able to put together uh, most of the Infinity Gauntlet, so that was really cool. Yeah. I know I said I was going to talk about Iron Man. We had time, but, uh, yeah, I'm a liar. So I'm talking about the Collector instead, if that works. <laughs> okay. Because I really like this Collector. He's got more of the movie look, and he does some really cool things, so he's really cheap. He is a super rare. Uh, he has three traits. His first is Bear of the Reality Gem. It's plus five. 
uh, collect your Kintsuki game with the Reality Gem equipped, which is really cool. If you remember in the Thor of the Dark World, the first gem he ever comes into possession is the Reality Gem, so I can really dig that. He's second trade is I sense a greater challenge at the beginning of the game. If an opponent's force includes an additional game element, heal the collector one click past his starting line to click zero. Ooh. Current additional game elements are ID cards, equipment, special terrain, and locations. And I got into an argument with some people. They were saying that retaliators are additional game elements. They're not. They're just low point characters. I understand what they meant when they call them low, you know, additional game elements. But based on normal definition, like they are tech. I won't get. I won't, you know, argue that they're tech, but they're not additional game elements. <coughs> so you, I'm right. You're wrong. Take that. Anyways. Uh, his last trait is my collection grows. Collector can be equipped with any number of equipment objects at the same time. Protect the pulse wave on that trait. So he can just go ahead and be equipped as many things as you want. He can start the game with a gem equipped, and then you can go ahead and uh, TK him an object. He can equip that. So he can just hold a whole bunch of stuff. And I got to say, I really appreciate that whiz kid. So what does the dial look like? He's the power cosmic team ability. He's only 55 points, seven range, one bolt, no other special combat symbols. I like that his significant appearance is Howard the Duck, number one in 2015. Makes me hold out hope that we're going to get a Howard the Duck in the set. He has Elders of the Universe and Cosmic keyword. He's before click zero. So his click zero is eight phasing, 11 attack with special attack power, 18 defense with impervious, and three damage, which is only slightly better than his normal starting click, which is just an 18 defense with invulnerability with all the same stuff. Then he goes on to some side stuff later in the dial, uh, goes into some toughness after invulnerability. He keeps that special attack power until his fifth click or sixth click, however you want to say it. And on that fifth click, he has stealth and regen with no other abilities. He never has any damage powers but I guess that's okay. What does his special attack power do? It's, I find your hammer very unique. Incapacitate, period. When the collector uses it, instead of giving an action token, after resolutions, you may choose one equipment object equipped to a hit character and unequip it. And then, this is the second part of the trait, free. Equip an unheld and unequipped opposing equipment object within range and line of fire. So, if you wanted to... You could carry him all the way up to an opposing character within seven range, or their equipment within seven range, and he can just free action, take it from them. I really dig that. I think that's awesome. So, or in other ways, if you wanted to, you could make him an attacker. You could uh, give him the Goblin Guider, give him Running Shot, stuff like that. You know, you can equip him that your first turn, have him do all sorts of stuff. I really like this collector. I feel like other collectors came really close to how he should be, but with the introduction of equipment and just the fact that I can pile a whole bunch of stuff on his card, uh, it feels really more like uh, Tanelier Tyven than it ever has before. So I really dig this collector. I really think this might be the perfect iteration of him. I like him. Uh, I also tweeted out, if you read on Twitter, uh, the thing said, well, 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 hello, Maximus. Now, I, I don't want to go into Maximus. I just really like Maximus as a character. He's another super rare in this set. Uh, but as you would expect with a Maximus, there's some crazy rolling shenanigans because he's he's just off his rocker. So you have to roll, and some of the options are not too great, and some are uh, pretty good. So I thought that was fun uh, as a thing that they introduced into the game again. It's been a while since we've had, like, a Maximus when was the last time we had a Maximus? That would be Guardians of the Galaxy in 2014. Okay. So, well, yeah. it was about time we got another one. So, <laughs> I will, uh, real real quick, I'll jump over to the Space Gym that we did get. Uh, it's 10 points. Also, indestructible, equip any, unequip, drop. Effect, modify speed plus one. Phasing, teleport. Passenger two. When this character hits, if the attack roll was 10 or higher, after resolutions, you may place a hit character up to... Eight squares away from their current square. <laughs> funny, uh, not that great, but funny. So there's that. I uh, I think it's hilarious. I really like it a lot. Honestly, it's um, it's so weird, and I really dig that the gems aren't just like overpowered or whatever. They're just kind of weird, and I really like that a lot. 
Yeah. I think that, uh, wh how do you feel about the transition from, like, the old gyms with the old Infinity Gauntlet to what they made them into? Good changes, bad changes, you don't care? Uh, someone did go ahead and comment um, a Space Gem on the picture. Let me see if I can find that really quick, actually. Uh, so, yeah, Jason Robert Statham uh, commented on the Space Gem and had a link to, or a picture of the old Space Gem. I didn't have an Infinity Gauntlet, never played the Infinity Gauntlet event, and I never knew really how they worked, never really played against one, so I'm not broken up about these new gems not being as good or better or whatever, but based on the old Space Gem, which was just phasing teleport, carry ability, modify speed value by plus two, basically the same thing, except, um, you know, you don't get a plus two, you get a plus one, you get to carry two people instead, and I feel like the placing character is eight squares away is awesome, especially since it does not require range and line of fire. So I, I really dig that, even if it is on a 10 or higher. So I think this is fine. So I, I like it a lot. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'm done with the figure spoiled this week. Uh, there's so much to go out there and read. There's, there's so a lot. That dropped, so I'm done. Is there any last-minute things you wanted to talk about before we moved into the community section? Man, I'd say that's all. All right. Here we go. There are dozens of us. Dozens! All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a couple cleanup things. I thought it was really cool and we're genuinely excited about it. Only, I think, 16 more people like us on Facebook, and we're at 800, which is our target goal. So if you have not jumped onto Facebook, uh, please do that. If you're more of a Twitter person, we only need five more followers, and we're at 650 followers, which is exciting for a podcast about hero clicks. <laughs> not a huge demand for those in the world, by the way. Believe it or not. Um, yeah, but, <laughs> uh, but, but um, you should know, uh, we, we like, to, like to entertain you guys and gals, and hopefully you find value in what we are delivering to you guys uh, every week. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, we would appreciate it, because uh, I think we are currently below... Uh, what it costs to produce the podcast now again on uh, Patreon. So, if you wouldn't mind, jump onto our Patreon. You can get your heroic title, uh, like citizen, vigilante, protagonist, which you will see. You will hear some of those in the upcoming community section. But if you needed just a little bit more of an incentive to do that, if you did not, if you're not on Facebook, if you're not on Twitter, you wouldn't have known this until right now. But, uh, and I said this a long time ago, if we had enough money coming in, we would do something back for the community, uh, for all of those people that over the time have uh, helped produce this podcast, because that's what you guys are, producers of this podcast. So we accumulated enough money that I finally had enough money, which was not exactly cheap, by the way, uh, to have made a bunch of Dial H for Hero Clicks custom D6 dice. Um, they are black with white little pips, and on the ones side, are the Dial H logo, and they look sweet. Like, they are actually good quality. And I'm genuinely excited to get those out to everybody that has helped produce this podcast um, because you guys mean a lot to me and to Caller. And without you guys, we wouldn't be here. I've said that before. It's true. It will continue to be true. So uh, we're going to get those sent out to you. But uh, next episode... Uh, the second episode of every month is the key, the uh, Heroic Ranking Up Ceremony, and um, people are going to be ranking up. And if you guys want to jump on there and uh, start helping us out and get us back past where uh, we're not only getting the podcast paid for, but also uh, we can start saving up for more additional stuff like this in the future, and you can get your own uh, Dial H for Heroic custom dice that you can roll at any one of your wonderful uh, tournaments that you go to. By the way, someone commented... On, uh, I think it was on Twitter, maybe. Maybe it was on Reddit. I'm not really sure. But they're like, you need to sand those edges down, like on the corners. These are the kind what? of dice. Yeah, they're like, they, apparently they like the rounded edges on dice. Oh, what a and monster. Was, okay. And I was, like, I was like, no thanks. I hate ROC dice. They roll right off the table. I don't like how they spin. Like, it's just, like, come on, man, just land. Like... You're sitting there, you'll roll it, and it'll keep spinning. You're like, we know it's going to be a six. We've seen the freaking thing on the top. Okay, just stop it. Just stop it. We know it's a six, man. Thank you. Yeah. I, Guess I, what doesn't I happen. really hate those. Guess what doesn't happen with custom Dial H for Heroclix dice? That exact problem. And they're not going to roll off the table exactly. as often 
as, as unless you Zoro's chuck your dice is. off the table like some people do. I I have a bad habit of doing that sometimes too. I don't mm. know. It just happens. But uh, these ones they land nice and flat. I like uh, I like cut edges. Honestly, I much prefer those kinds of dice. So yeah. Mm. Decisions were made so that that was that was true when we didn't have like the rounded edges. Good. But anyway, um, seriously, for like a, like a dollar a month or whatever, if you feel like we're worth a dollar a month for you guys as in into entertainment, uh, we will legitimately send you a uh, a set of dice. So that's that would really help us out. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, every week on Tuesdays, speaking of the community, uh, we put a question up on the Twitter and on Facebook. It's our Community Tuesdays question, and this week's question was, what is your favorite additional game element, any element you don't like sitting across from, and any that you wish they'd make more of? Calder, what do you like, what do you hate? So, and I know a lot of people don't like this one, but ever since ID cards were introduced, I have loved them. I, uh... I sometimes can't make enough room on my sideline for ID cards. I dig them a lot. Most of my early competitive teams was like this Lex Luthor team, and that was very ID card heavy. I always liked ID cards. Uh, I'm never going to apologize. Many people just hate them. They're just like, oh, ID cards are the scourge, bane of the world. And I think there's a good risk and a good reward for ID cards, so I really like them. And I absolutely love equipment, honestly. More than anything right now, I'm loving the equipment shenanigans. I love that collector. I love all these cool equipment figures. I like I like equipment. Man, it's so dope. So, yeah, ID cards and equipment have to be my favorite. My least favorite, it, it's honestly map bonuses because um, sometimes they just kind of suck and they can ruin the whole game. Looking at you, Penguin Lounge, you stupid <laughs> puppins getting in my way. All right? So I really don't care for map bonuses, and I really uh, kind of don't care for uh, – what are those ones you put on the map? Whatever they're called, the wrecked vehicles. I kind of don't care for those a lot of the time. Please, Ooh. everyone in the future, play that penguin map against Calder just so you can be like, you'll never take me alive, Batman! Uh, <laughs> See, it's funny to laugh about now, but uh, I won't be responsible <laughs> so for what funny. happens after those 45 minutes when the game's up. Just saying. <laughs> Okay, all right. Uh, I, I'm going to jump on the same bandwagon as you with the ID cards. I always thought they were a cool idea. Uh, but I don't abuse them like people abuse them. That's the thing. Like, when I put ID cards on a team, I only do Avengers ID cards. It's going to go on an Avengers theme team that I have because it's thematic. I'm not going to put, like, Unimine just to, ba power, or to battery in somebody stupid like a, like a wolverine to, like that doesn't make any sense i'm not gonna do anything like that but you remember it was like what is it marvel versus capcom and then like from the side of the screen some Ooh, yeah. other character come flying in to do like one jack him in the face move and you're like cool it's like a team up yeah this always yeah. felt like a team up to me it's like they came in for one second it shouldn't be that big of a deal it's just people people took it and did what was technically legal, but they probably shouldn't have done for the state of the game just to make everybody hate them. So that's what I really like to do. I don't know if there's anything that I, I don't really like sitting across the game from. I'm like, you do you, whatever. Okay, so, nice. Uh, you want to start us up on Facebook? What do we get? Yeah, absolutely. Brian Poling said, I love the special objects. They are so far, and they actually seem fun and balanced to use. ID cards are the worst game element, hands down. <laughs> what do you got? There's that. Superfan Christian Bogan, by the way, said, My favorite would have to be objects. They are appropriately co costed. Only have a couple of things that make your characters better and are fun to use. Colossal Retail, mainly Surter. Nothing ruins your day faster than a Surter in your face. <laughs> I'll agree with that. I will. Uh, Matty G said, I really liked and miss ATAs. I uh, want more special terrain. I wish there was a max of ID cards per team, like two. Uh, the game right now is heavily focused on them, and I'm kind of over with it. Okay, all right. Uh, we have uh, Citizen Tiemu, our man of Finland, said, I like the current crop of objects. Wish DC would get more of them as well. I like Colossal Retaliators as a different way to bring big pieces to smaller games. They just require a major shift in thinking when I face them. I really warmed up to the clicks FX and wish we'd see more of them. Agreed. They need to bring those back, like, stat. Matthew Armour said, I really enjoy almost all the new equipment. It just makes some teams fun. Uh, but like all Heroclix things, it can also be the worst thing. I wouldn't mind if they made some resources again. I've had fun with the old ones. If they make resources again, I just don't make them broken, you know? Yeah, right. Like, 
everybody knows what the, what the broken ones are. So just don't make them that powerful anymore, and we should be good. <clears throat> we have Vigilante Collectible said, uh, oh, I think this was a response to that last one, said, I don't think clicks FX count because they're not really a game element, just a physical gimmick. I'd pick them, but since I can't, I'll go with vehicles. Captain America's motorcycle, the turtle van, Kang's time toilet, <laughs> and great pieces that added a ton of flavor to the game. I love, I loved uh, the Sky Cycle. That was seriously. Well, that was dope. Hawkeye, I will always play the Sky Cycle because flavor. But uh, agreed. Going into David Herberger, I miss the Clicks FX bases. They looked pretty cool and had basic effects. ID cards just never caught on with me. Hmm. By the way, this answer, I hope it makes you mad. Chance McCall said, I was a fan of Clicks FX and you would like to see and would like to see them return. Equipment is a great concept as well. Resources and relics and ID cards are a bunch of dirty, good for nothing scalawags. If it was up to me, I'd meet them at high noon for a standoff. Happy trails. He's he's taking your ta your bot your taglines. How dare he? Like, I mean <clears throat> okay, Chance. You better slow your roll there, pal. That's it. No, there's no more to that. All right, fantastic. Moving on. Jake Weaver, Phoenix Force, was a favorite of mine. I actually really liked the Phoenix Force. Like, I liked it a lot. Uh, that was probably one of my most used resources I've ever had. It's great. Okay. I, it was it was terrifying, actually, to play against sometimes because you knew. You knew if you killed a character, that should be a moment where you rejoice, right? You're right. Like, oh, yeah, I, I took one of them down. But then all the other ones get more powerful, and you're oh, like, oh, yeah. Ugh. So, yeah. Loyal Miller said, I like almost all the game elements that are modern right now and would love to love more, especially ID cards. There we go. This man has the right to the right answer. I also want more things like the Super Friends. I hate sitting across from old relics mixed with modern pieces. A lot of times it makes them broken. Does he mean relics or, like, resources? Because, like, relics are garbage. Yeah, I mean, just the chance of not picking it up and just wasting all that time. Unless, of course, they have split lip, and then, once again, you will still not pick it up. Like, relics are, aren't that great, guys. They're really not. The old Cosmic Cube is so bad. Ooh, it's terrible. That it will, it will actually make you throw them in the trash. It's so bad. Matthew Armour said, I really enjoyed almost all the new equipment. Just makes some teams fun. But, like, I already read this. It was posted twice. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the next one. So, again, Justin Quinn, Honeycutt, ATA cards, and just their general presence. I love sitting across from Possessors. Mm, yeah. Hey, at least you can write down the what they pick now. So That's true. That, that's good. Oh, also, since... Yeah, that was nice. Um, I forgot to mention this earlier, because I, you know, foreshadowing. Hey, guess what you need dice with? Oh yeah, the new WWE starter sets. Hey, guess where you can get dice? Dial H for here, clicks. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Vigilante. No, that's a lie. Protagonist. Porcupine spaceship grenade said, "I love Colossals, Retaliator and Non-Retaliator, mainly for aesthetic reasons, uh, but it's also therapeutic to reach across the table, drop a giant man gog." and bash your opponent's team after they damage your favorite piece. Not really a fan of playing with or against ID cards. Dude, I'm seriously, like, see, uh, just looking over at the serpent anytime I want is just, it makes, it fills Look me with such happiness guy. and joy, man. Jeez. <laughs> uh, kind of a different answer. Um, more along the opposite, really. Citizen Jeff uh, Pollier. In the current game, I like equipment. Uh, don't like some of the characters starting with equipment for free. Equipment is effectively the modern version of feats. I can kind of see that. Um, I don't like Colossal Retaliation. It makes no sense from a story point of view. For Groot, for example, should not just magically appear to strike after a teammate takes damage. As for a Golden Age element that I miss, I gotta say, Battlefield Conditions. Hmm. Battlefield conditions were a very interesting element to this game. But the thing is, most people, like, opted to not use them. Or if you knew someone was going to use them, there was another battlefield condition called, like, Ordinary Day. You would just bring that and cancel out their battlefield condition, so it made it kind of useless. I don't know. It was weird. Right. It was really weird. Uh, I have an answer from Chat Reader, really short and to the point, said, I really don't like facing team bases. Guess what, <laughs> Mr. Chat Reader? You're not the only one. I think everyone hates facing team bases. 
I really like when people say, like, team bases or possessors and stuff like that, because we don't have to worry about that anymore in a modern age game, so at least there's a little bit of joy there for him. Tristan Campos said, I really enjoy special objects. I never liked ID cards, and I missed Clicks FX bases. Everyone does, man. Everyone does. Super fan the ruffian, little plastic superhero, said, Hands down, my favorite additional game element was the Green Lantern power battery and constructs. Ooh, that that's, a, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. I hated sitting across from the Batcave and utility belt. Also, if you want a very convoluted explanation of the utility belt, go back one episode. <laughs> <I'm going to. laughs> I really like in all, really like all the recent special objects that I ha- that have been coming up. It would just be nice if DC was shown more love. Okay, so agree on that for sure. They they need more things. I just wish we could get some kind of communication out of WizKids as an explanation to why we don't get more DC product. Why was Rebirth so bad? Why don't we only get one DC set a year? Let's not be angry at Marvel. Let's uh, let's try to place our, our frustrations somewhere else, guys. Just remember, it's not, uh, it's not the other. Whatever. I don't care. Finish us off on Facebook. David J. Gaffney. The clicks FX bases were new and interesting. Blah, 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 blah. Specific to the character, I would like to see them again in the future. Can't talk today. So that was your last one on Facebook? That was my last one, yeah, absolutely. Yes, Twitter Army, we did it. We beat Calder this Boo. week. Good job, guys. Facebook loses. Alexander Travora said, I would like an immersion field on the game. I'll explain. What? 3D buildings for the maps that can be used for super strength characters like this, and he links two pictures of comic book panels where it's basically characters with super strength, uh, like ripping pieces up, or like super, or, uh, Spider-Man is holding up this huge building in this one, and like the Hulk is ripping things out of the ground, like uh, an iron or steel, uh, ra- uh, what are those called? I beams? Yeah, I beams. Oh yeah, I beams. Out of the out of the ground, that would be sweet. I think we get more uh, 3D things like that. Do you just slap down on the field with detachable pieces? How sweet would that be? I feel like it would be very bulky to walk around everywhere. I mean, on a casual standpoint, that'd be really cool and fun to do with just your bros or something at home. Dude, people are bringing around, like, three colossal oh, ladies right. at once. Oh. Like, you're, I'm not worried about something that – whatever. Whatever. They made their bed lie in it. Jedi Legend said, I love clicks FX. Useful, cool looking, and makes sense. I'm getting used to ID cards. I don't like anything I can't that I can't be bothered to learn, uh, i.e. team bases, batteries, etc. By the way, Jedi Legend, I don't know if you need a, an explanation of the utility belt, but go back to last episode. It's convoluted. I think that a lot of the extra things convolute the game. Uh, though, yeah, no, yeah, that's probably true when they add a lot of stuff, but. It's this constant thing in this game, the like philosophy of if you add too many game elements, too many game mechanics, it makes the game convoluted. People aren't going to know the rules, but at the same time, the players that love the game want more and more and more things regardless of what they are. We just want more things. So it's like balancing that out sometimes I think has got to be hard for WizKids, like I can only imagine they're sitting there going, like, do we want to make more things? Do we want to stick with the formula that we've got going? Where do we want to go with this game? So who knows? Uh, Jason Levine said, me, I like Battlefield conditions, even though they are not modern legal. Man, those haven't been modern legal for, like, a decade. (laughs) Not a fan of resources. Any of them love to see event dials make a comeback. I bet you there's some people listening to this podcast right now don't even know what event dials are. What's an, uh, what's an event dial, Chris? Not important. We're going to move on. Fantastic. Ben, the uh, protagonist. Oh, he's not, he's not a protagonist. He's a vigilante. He's a vigilante. Ben Jones, it's our man in Australia, said, uh, bystander producing clicks. Devil Dinosaur, Stegron, Dr. Demonicus, to name a few. My new favorite is Maxi Zeus and his stone harpies. Enjoy the autonomous ability that the harpies have. Now, that actually brings up a, a little weird qualm I have with that. Why why did they bring Autonomous into the game and there's still pieces that are generating bystanders that don't have Autonomous? I feel like 
Uh, it makes sense for some things to be autonomous, like the Star of Fights or random robots or something like that. But some characters, like dinosaurs, they're a freaking dinosaur. They're not autonomous, you know? Like, I feel like it's more of a, how to put it, a flavor thing. Why not all bystanders would be autonomous. Now, some things, like bees, swarms, bees should probably be autonomous, but aren't. So there's, you know, a few give and take there, but I feel like not every bystander is necessarily autonomous. You just reminded me that I have this clip from Wicker Man. No, no. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Jeez. Oh, no, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! Just, just absolute wonderful acting. I, I didn't know we were going to get uh, an award-winning clip from one of the greatest movies of all time with of obviously all... one of whoa, the greatest whoa. scenes in any cinematic uh, history. I mean, that was just impressive. Uh, especially there on this are some podcast. Better movies than Wicker Man. Not many, but a couple. Like uh, Resident Evil 3. Of course. Is, is, a, is a great movie. Ghost Dad, as always. A Fantastic Four 2015 uh, was, of course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have a Jedi Legends uh, <laughs> Hero Clicks tip of the week. We should probably do that just to get out of Wicker Man. Yeah. Help you, I can. Yes. <laughs> Take you to your destination, I will. <laughs> He's stuck in a in a wooden cage or something, and there's they're funneling bees into his eyes, and that stupid scene. so bad. Anyway, <clears throat> Jedi Legend, thank you, sir, for giving us such wonderful Heroclix tips of the week. And this week he said, read the PAC. What? You've already read it? Well, go read it regularly. Print one out and take it with you. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, bring a pack. Why? Because there's too many rules in this game for you to remember verbatim what it says in a pack. Bring one with you. I feel like that's a solid and self-explanatory uh, little tip. What have you, you got anything else, Father? No, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I mess up rules all the time. And I would say I pretty much have every little power memorized. But do I have every single little syllable? No. Nobody can. So it's always good to brush up every once in a while. Agreed. And because I put in the work for this, ladies and gentlemen, we have a birthday this week. And it's none other than Jedi Legend. It is his birthday this weekend. So as we like to do, to bring it back, giving Mr. Jedi Legend a happy Arabian birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh Lord, I missed it. You missed Jeez. it. You didn't oh my gosh. I, I know you did. It's fine. You can say it out loud. <laughs> you don't have to hate what you love, no. You can just you just love it out loud. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> and as always, if you have somebody in your local play group, maybe a judge yourself, you want to give a shout out to you on the podcast, give them a sexy happy Arabian birthday. Just tell us who it is, when it is. And you get to hear that sweet, sweet tone. Was Jedi Legend's birthday on uh, May 4th, or when was it? I, he didn't say. He just said it was this week. Because that would be quite clever if it was, uh, you know, mm. May the 4th be with you and all that. Mm. Maybe he was born on the 4th. He was born to be a Jedi Legend. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to go with it, unless he was born on the 5th, in which case that doesn't work at all. So let's move on to the next thing, which is a uh, Malcolm Rush question block. <laughs> Malcolm Rush, the man from Japan, likes to send us in questions from time to time. Calder, you have a list of questions in front of you. Let's, let's uh, machine gun through these things. I do, you? absolutely. So, question key for team building. What are the things that you look for when building a team? Chris? Main attacker, first of all. I always start with the main attacker, followed directly by a uh, support character that synergizes well with the main attacker. And then, depending on point totals left, I will go for a tertiary attacker in that order. Okay, fantastic. I don't really make 
teams quite like that. I just sort of see um, if it's like competitive, I like to kind of see what uh, what kind of gimmick I can pull off. I prefer Alpha Strike style stuff. So that's what Captain America, Sam Cap, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If I lose Sam Cap, I'm not really broken up about it. If I lose Captain America, I'm not broken up about it. If I lose both, maybe I'm a little sad. And that'll kind of suck. So I kind of like having uh, all sorts of cool attackers. Uh, for more casual stuff, I build just like the worst casual teams. We did Bizarro, and I played like 300 point, um, what was his name? Doomsday, and then like X51, and then a Kite Man. Like I just make just random teams, honestly, when it comes to just yeah, other say. stuff like that. Just, yeah. <laughs> Doomsday and X51. Yeah, those guys are awesome. Anyways, number two, how much should you put for a main? How much should you put for a main and or second attacker? Maybe pay for a main or second attacker. All right, are we playing with, like, 300 points here? Yeah, let's, let's shoot for that. Uh, all right. Um, okay, so if it's 300 points, probably about 150, 175 points for a main attacker based off of the way I build teams. Uh, if I have the ability to make a tertiary attacker, remember, some support characters out there actually make pseudo-decent tertiary attackers. So you can kind of get like two for one in that aspect. Um, I don't know, between 50 and 75 points for a tertiary attacker. It just depends on what it is, what they do, because, I mean, you guys know as well as I do, not all pieces are created equally. Some pieces worth 50 points are absolutely amazing. Some points, points uh, some pieces that are worth 50 are just complete gar or 75, they're complete garbage. Even though they're 25 points more, you think you're going to get 25 more points worth of awesomeness, and you're not, so... That's kind of, yeah, about there. Right. Um, for me, I suppose I don't really care too much about points, more or less what they can do. You could call Captain America my main attacker. You could call all the ID cards for a Sam Cap style team build the main attacker. Like Hawkeye is the main attacker on a Hawkeye build team, and he's 65 points. Your your secondary attacker is 80 points, and that's Star Fox. So, you know, riddle me that. So it's, uh, it's really more about what a character can do uh, than what you pay for them or well, how many points you put into something like that. Uh, number three, how much for support should you put on your team? And what key points for support should you remember when building a team? Chris. Okay, so probs, always probs for me. Uh, I know some people actually they focus more on getting either the outwit or the, the perplex, but it's always going to be probs for me. And I don't want to use, like, I don't want to use 100 points just to get probs on my team. So probably something around 50 points to 75 points, and I'll settle for that. The cheapest support I can possibly get. I like to put more into attacking than support. Um, that's why I don't like to put perplex on my team. I like to put characters that do plus two perplex, or they do other stat bonuses and power enhancements, stuff like that. I prefer that stuff. I like to have at least one probability control on my team, and if I can get that on the team as cheap as possible, I like to do that. I don't care about outwit. Outwit doesn't matter. It's never been a power I like to use. It's probably good. I don't know. I don't care. I don't care for outwit that much as a power. It never seems, honestly, that useful to me, and leadership is always on a team. Uh, find a figure, your main attacker, secondary attacker, whoever, who also has leadership. I think that's very important. Number four, with ID cards, what are the key ID cards and characters that you should put on a team? I'm not going to have an answer for the meta other than what is kind of collectively known as the good ID cards, you know, like Wolverine, for example. Right. Uh, but if if I'm playing casual and I'm running ID cards, there are certainly ones that I have found that I like more. And remember I said I only use Avengers ID cards. So, like, there's certain ones I'm never, ever going to touch. Like, I, I don't use Quake, for example, as an ID card. However... Uh, I do like the Moon Knight one that brings in the, um, it's like an OP kit, Moon Knight, just for like a quick little exploit weakness attack, which is kind of nice. I like uh, the 50 point ones that bring in Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Why? Because Luke Cage, I mean, it's just like three damage right off the bat with the Iron Fist, you're pretty close is going to hit. I mean, he has like 11 or 12 attacks, so that's pretty decent. I don't pull it, like I just don't do cheesy stuff with ID cards. So I, I almost never use the inspirational abilities on them. Uh, sometimes legitimately I just forget <laughs> that they're a thing. I, didn't, I never said I was the best player, guys. Um, but I just kind of played with the ones that I like the most because I like the characters, or they're just, like, really cheap, and you can pull them in with anybody. Okay, for sure. Um, I mean, stereotypical stuff. Chamber's good. Hardly Quinn is good for clearing out masses. Huddled up teams, stuff like that. Uh, Brood Professor X is good for taking out Colossals. Wolverine, 
is good for healing up your team, all sorts of stuff. Really, there's so many ID cards, and right now it's really an X-Men ID card game that we're playing in, even with the very few BC ID cards we have. It's it's X-Men rules, so those are pretty much the ID cards that are worth using right now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, number five, how much equipment should you have on a team, and what type of equipment do you like on the team? So... Man, that is so subjective based off of what pieces you want to run with it because there's some teams based off of the pieces you don't even need equipment on. The figures right. are so good, you, you don't even need equipment. Um, I would say since you are limited to three items on the team, uh, uh, now with the new Infinity Gauntlet, like that's 30 bucks or 30 points right off the bat. And then what the Cosmic Cube is like 30 points off the bat. I highly suggest you don't put a Cosmic Cube and the Infinity Gauntlet on the same team just to eat up 60 points out of your total. Mm. Like that, that seems like a really bad idea to me. However, if you if you run like two pieces of equipment and it's under like 20 points, that seems completely doable based off of the figure that you want to run it on. Let's be honest, some pieces are kind of garbage until you put a piece uh, a piece of equipment on them and you're like, okay. Now they're playable because you might just really like the character itself and you just wanted to give them something so that they stand at least that basic amount of a chance of doing something useful for you. Um, so it really just depends on your team. I wouldn't probably – I probably wouldn't spend more than like 20 or 30 points on items. Oh, right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't like spending that much on items either. Uh, honestly, it's really, what item should I put on my team? Well, figure out what your main or secondary attacker, A, can I token them up for a turn to get an item to them, you know, whether I TK, move it up, whatever, can I one turn one equip, and if so, is it okay for them to take an action to equip it uh, before they can do anything else, or do they need to get rolling right away? The second thing you need to ask is, what are their short comings? What can they approve on? They don't have running shot, give them running shot. They don't have any kind of movement attack, I don't know. Give them exo specs, man. They got running shot, but no penetrating second blast or pulse wave, or whatever. Give them exo specs. Like, figure out what that figure is just missing. Every figure can be better in a way. All right. Plus, there's a few equipment that just increase the longevity theoretically Absolutely. of a character. You know, like what if you just add equipment like the symbiote that gives them uh, shape change? Yeah. You know, like that, that. There's that. Also, what if you are running a character that's clearly going to be running and gunning the whole game from from range, and you're like, oh, I think an Asgardian shield on this character might be a good idea. Absolutely. Yes, that's a good idea. And uh, to end this off, it's question number six. How can you make team building fun? All right, well, I think it starts outside of the game with what are the stakes of the game. If you remove all stakes of the game and you're just playing for fun, you're already on a good leg to making the building of the team fun to begin with. Because if you can build, you're, re you're removing the restrictions of keeping out your favorite characters for the sake of winning if, if, there's, uh, if there's a prize you're trying to win. So if you remove the prizes, then you can play with what you want to play with. That's like kind of step one. Step two, use the characters that you like. If you don't know what a character, like their background story or something like that, it's not like there isn't a billion source materials out there that you can, I, I don't know, even Wikipedia has background information in all these characters. What about all these characters that, like, by the way, I need. To, I think I need to correct myself. Remember when I was going on and on about uh, Colonel Poison? Yes, we oh, all okay. remember that, Chris. Shut up. I, <laughs> I, thought that was a, I thought that was a guy. I think it's a, it's a female. And the only reason I know that is because I took the time to actually go to the DC Wikia and actually type in Colonel Poison, and then I learned about the character. I was like, oh, this is very interesting to me. So it might make you care more about individual pieces if you go and seek out the source material, which might then be end up uh, making a situation where it's more fun for you, especially when you pull off characters that no one's ever heard of and – it's not the greatest figure. Like, people would say, oh, you should definitely use this piece. I'm like, well, no, I want to use Colonel Poison because you picked up that source material. Like, I feel like that would be fun team building because then the next time when you're like, oh, I might want to put Colonel Poison on a team again because people don't know who that is, but I know who that is. It's like, I don't know. That's kind of how I build teams anyway and how I've always built teams. And it's always been fun for me, but some people are just, they're so focused on the prize. 
that they they immediately weed out like half the hero clicks ever made just so they can make sure that they win. I don't think that's a healthy way to play. Um. So to me, team building is just fun. Just period. So like, there's really no answer to this question because the question answers itself. How do you make team building fun? It kind of already is for me. I really enjoy team building. It's awesome. I get to go ahead and figure out all sorts of fun stuff. I get to rack my brain. I get to figure out what I'm missing from my collection that I might need to make, A, a comic accurate team, more comic accurate. I've straight up just bought characters because I realized they round out whatever version of the Justice League or Avengers or something, you know, so that's really cool. I just like team building, and I think if you ask a lot of people, they'll say it's one of the most fun parts of the game is team building. So I think team building has just kind of always been fun. And if you're stumped, ask a buddy. Like, that's one way. If you're having a hard time building a team, just ask someone else. Ask a friend. And, yeah, do stuff like that. If uh, if you're finding team building is not very fun because you're just getting stumped and trying to figure out how to best make your team, then just ask someone else. And an additional thing is remember – now, I do this for fun. I only play theme teams. But if you're trying to get somebody new into the game, I remember old uh, content years and years ago when people are trying to bring new players into the game. They said this, and I agree with it, which is if you know somebody likes miniature games and you know that they like various different characters, like they like Ghost Rider, but they also really like Superman, there's nothing to say that you can't put Superman and Ghost Rider on a team. You can put X-51 and Doomsday on a team. And was that fun for you, Calder? I suspect it was it Yeah, was it was awesome. Fun, no, right? it was great. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're pitching this to people in the future to try to bring people into the game, you're like, man, you, you really like Ghost Rider and you really like Superman. What if I told you there's a game you can play where you can put both of them on the same team? You know, pitch it like that. That sounds fun. That's, that's a cool team build because those are just the characters that mean something to those people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Absolutely. I totally agree with you, man. All right. That is, that's all for, uh, questions. Oh, from- uh, I'm not just going to remember what I was saying. Even if you don't play theme teams, my favorite theme teams are ones that don't have keywords that even exist yet. You'll like sit across from <laughs> someone. Do you have a theme team? Well, yes, I do, but they haven't made the ducky dozen Howard the duck team keyword a thing and they're never going to, but that is my, I love theme teams like that where it's so comic accurate and it's so obscure. They don't have a, they don't have a freaking keyword for it, man. And I honestly feel like people should get theme team bonuses when they do stuff like that. So, yeah. Dude, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And a team that I've remade time and time again uh, over the years is based off of a character we just talked about earlier, The Hood. Oh, nice. Back, do, do you remember uh, during the Secret Invasion in the comic books, well, like, and then into the Dark Reign and what was going on there, uh, The Hood created what was officially known as Hood's Gang? And it was just this, like this ragtag group of bad guys of like the most obscure bad guys. Now some of them we we've never had made into hero clicks. Like I'm pretty sure like Slug is in there <laughs> and stuff. But you know who else was on Hood's gang? The entire Wrecking Crew and was his name Black? Uh, not Black Lightning. He was the one from the Shield set. Nick Fury and Agents of Shield. And he was in a black costume with like a lightning, uh, yellow lightning bolt. And I was like, when are you ever going to use this character? And then I was like, you can put him on the Hoods gang. So I'd run uh, the Hoods gang. Also, they, they needed to make a new Nitro in the Civil War set, but they didn't. But the old Nitro, you're never going to use that until you put him on the Hoods gang. So, like, that was a thing. I really liked doing it. I want to do that again now. I just, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I love that. The next game I play, I want to play that team again. Hoods gang, my guy. Hoods gang. Hoods, Hoods gang, man. It's good stuff. Okay. Anything else uh, from the community? I think that's all. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything else. So, as always, uh, we're getting real close, like I mentioned at the beginning of community section. Jump onto Facebook. Just search Dial H for Hero Clicks. Like the page. On Twitter, we are at Dial H for Hero Clicks. Help us get to 650 if you haven't already. And if you would like to send an email, which I totally check now. Thank you, Christian Bogan, or super fan Christian Bogan, uh, who literally sent an email just to check and see if I check the emails. No joke. What a nice guy. <laughs> Thank you for that. It actually made me laugh out loud. Uh, you can send that to dilatesforheroclicks at gmail.com. Don't forget, we got dice. We have a red bubble if you want a shirt or a mug or something like that. And that's all that I have. Call it. Fantastic. Just so you guys know. Uh, right now, Black Panther is up for pre-order at CoolStuffInc.com. You can use code DIAL5 for 5% 
off your order, and it will stack with your whole miniatures, uh, things that your account normally has, which is really cool. And uh, as always, Dallage for Hero Quicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Quicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. My, 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 my,